Hi, and welcome to part two of my Microsoft 365 Defender series. Today, I wanna to go through with you and talk a little bit about Microsoft Defender for Identity. And highlighted on screen is Microsoft's definition of what Defender for Identity does. So you can read there, it uses Active Directory signals to identify, detect, investigate advanced threats, compromised identities, and malicious insider actions directed at your organization. So there's quite a lot there. So basically, and we'll look at the architecture a little bit later on, but Microsoft Defender for Identity has some sensors that run on your Active Directory domain controllers, and it feeds this information into the Microsoft Defender for Identity cloud service. So there was previously a product called Microsoft Advanced Threat Protection. Uh, Microsoft acquired that uh, solution a number of years ago, and that was uh, very similar to Defender for Identity. The biggest difference was that ATA, Advanced Threat Analytics, uh, the core component, the server component, was installed on-premises uh, in your environment or somewhere close to your domain controllers so that it can communicate with your domain controllers. Again, there were sensors installed on your domain controllers that, that talked to the ATA center, as it was called, and uh, that would, would run a bunch of uh, assessment against the signals that were coming from your domain controllers uh, to, to tell you when uh, malicious actions uh, or some of those things that we look at in, in the definition there were taking place. So that wasn't a cloud service, it was on premises. So the, the rate at which change or improvements happened was it was a little bit slower. We had to wait for, for software updates. The benefit of running Microsoft Defender for Identity, uh, and I believe that, that ATA, the on-premises product is now uh, in extended support. So the benefit for running Microsoft Defender for Identity is that we're using a cloud service in the back end. We no longer need that, that server on premises. And that gives us uh, a great benefit in, in the way that Microsoft are updating the solution to look for new um, malicious actions that might be taking place. And Microsoft can deploy them quicker to Microsoft Defender for Identity than to ATA. There, there was also the, the previous name, and I should mention this, the previous name for Microsoft Defender for Identity was Azure ATP. So if you see, Azure ATP mentioned anywhere uh, in some old documentation or some old guides, or if people are referencing, they might still refer to it as Azure ATP. I think the name change came about in September 2019 to align everything through to the Microsoft 365 Defender umbrella of services. Um, again, referring to what, what we can see on scene there. So why is Microsoft Defender for Identity important? So we think about where we started from and, and how we're using Active Directory. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, 21 years ago, Microsoft introduced Active Directory with Windows Server 2000. Uh, so it's a store for our identities. Uh, it's the, the primary point of authentication for a lot of uh, our applications or, in, or a lot of our computers that are domain joined. So AD is generally hidden behind uh, a firewall uh, and it's well protected. We, we usually uh, only have access to Active Directory domain controllers on a local area network, an MPLS, a private network. We have good security around that. I would hope we have good security around that uh, with, with firewalls uh, and other layered, layered security. So why do we need Microsoft Defender for identity? So let's say in the example that someone does make it past a, a firewall. If, someone is using a VPN given the way that people are connecting to environments now, uh, because more of us have to be working remotely. Uh, more people are using VPNs than they ever were. Uh, they're not out, not inside the office, they're not on the local area network. So to get access to some of those applications, uh, we, we enable VPN. Things like uh, if there was an exploit on a an internet facing IIS server, as, as an example, we're allowing port 443 or we're allowing port 80 to that server and someone uses an exploit, maybe the server's not patched and gains access to the environment. So once uh, someone is inside the environment, they've, they've gotten past that initial, that initial boundary or that, that protected boundary uh, that we've been trusting, um, using as a, as a trust boundary, uh, I should say. So let's say someone makes it past whatever the scenario is, and it's always good to have uh, layered security. Uh, defense in depth is often a term uh, that's used for that. If identities are also then linked to Azure AD, so if you're using Azure AD Connect to synchronize your identities from Active Directory into Azure AD, if you're using Exchange Online or SharePoint Online to provide people with a single point of sign-on, you know, same, same sign-on used for on-premises Active Directory and the applications people are familiar with, uh, their computer, they might be domain joined, and also 
uh, Outlook, SharePoint, uh, those applications. So we're now at risk of exposing uh, more than just our, our on-premises applications uh, and uh, access to the Active Directory environment, we're now risking access to whatever is linked uh, in, the, in the example I gave you, uh, Azure Active Directory. So what's, uh, what's interesting here is I just want to quickly jump across to what um, some people refer to as dwell time, which is how long someone maintains access, uh, malicious access within your environment uh, without detection. Uh, and this this document we're looking at here is just from the Microsoft uh, security team, and it's talking about the the Dart uh, team within Microsoft. Uh, and they're they're talking here about um, the the dwell time, and I've just highlighted this section and saying, while the average dwell time numbers are trending downward, uh, it's still measured in days, usually double digit numbers, and and days of access to your systems is plenty of time to do massive damage, which is true. And there's another report here, which I think was December the 8th, 2020, so that's not too long ago. And Microsoft are talking here about uh, dwell is the time that they're explaining what it is and what the, the average is. And it, it varies depending on the reports that you see. And I think this number has dropped in the past. People are getting better at detecting those types of attacks, but still 50 to 60 days is quite significant uh, for someone to be within your environment before you actually detect or know about that. Uh, and can be a little bit scary. And so that's what we're trying to avoid here. We we want to make sure that if someone is doing something, they've gotten past somehow that, that initial security boundary. If you're Active Directory domain controllers that we're able to detect um, and and respond accordingly to, to investigate what may or may not be uh, an actual um, you know, threat uh, or an action of malicious intent within the environment. So what I've got up on the screen, so I just wanted to run through that and explain that uh, before we go on and talk about the Microsoft Defender for Identity Architecture. So one of the things that changed more recently was that Microsoft introduced or integrated the Defender for Identity portal, or signals I should say, with the Microsoft Cloud App Security Portal, which, which is great, uh, bringing that information uh, together in, into the one location. The Microsoft Defender for Identity portal is also probably one of the least exciting portals from Microsoft that I've seen. So it's probably a good idea that they brought that information together. Um, it's not just aesthetics though. Microsoft brought this information together for, for a number of reasons, uh, partly for correlation of, of information, um, as well as a, a way through the Cloud App Security portal to investigate um, more easily uh, uh, events that were malicious events that were happening in your environment. So basically what we're looking at here, uh, down here, there's the MDI sensors running on either ADFS or our domain controllers. And they're talking to the cloud service, the Microsoft Defender for Identity Cloud Service, which then sends the signals, as I mentioned, to Microsoft Cloud App Security, and is also fed into Microsoft 365 Defender. If you remember from uh, the part one, I very quickly showed you the security console, and I will just do that again. But where all of this information feeds in, uh, when you have Microsoft 365 Defender, the umbrella product, that all of that information feeds in to the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. And again, this is the security portal that we use for investigation across a number of those uh, products, the umbrella um, portal to do our investigation. So endpoints, identity, uh, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online. Uh, this is this is where we go. So that's the the architecture. Um, there's also a they've got a little bit here that talks about the console experience through the Cloud App Security Portal. You can still get to the Defender for Identity Portal, and uh, for the initial setup, that's that's a little bit important to do, uh, which I probably won't go into too much depth today, but I, I will show you that because uh, it helps to illustrate um, some of the things that are going on in the background. There's also some integration points there that you can see in the architecture with Seam, regardless of the Seam that you're using, uh, email notifications, Azure Sentinel, which is Microsoft's cloud Seam, and the Microsoft Security Graph as well. Well, enough theory, let's jump straight into looking at the Microsoft Defender for Identity Portal. And as I mentioned, it's not the most exciting portals that uh, a portal that you've ever seen, but it does uh, does serve as a purpose, uh, and you can investigate alerts 
through the portal, the ATP portal itself. Generally, most of what we do is in, in the configuration here. So I mentioned the sensors before, and I will regenerate my access key. Change that uh, before I make this vlog public. Uh, but you can see uh, I've got two sensors running on, on domain controllers, and those are feeding uh, information uh, both from event logs, from uh, security event logs and, and audit uh, policies that we've enabled on our domain controllers, as well as uh, traffic that's going in and out of those domain controllers um, network interfaces. So generally everything in our domain is talking to our domain controllers. So there's a lot of information that's getting passed there. And there is a, a tool, I'll mention this, there also is a tool to help you size uh, your domain controls appropriately to handle that extra load. So jumping through, I just want to show you some of what Microsoft, and this is probably um, but the best way to do it, some of what Microsoft Defender for Identity will detect, some of the known attacks, the, the non-behavioral attacks. And exclusions uh, are there so that if there's something uh, that is happening that we, we know about, we can exclude that from being notified. And one of those is um, synchronization of your directory, uh, your of directory services maliciously. And it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if this has changed recently, but um, Azure AD Connect would always get detected as a potential malicious replication of directory services because that's what you're doing. You're synchronizing Active Directory uh, with Azure AD uh, identities. Um, and so that's often something we have to exclude. But you can see there's, there's a bunch of, of known uh, types of attacks against your Active Directory environment that Defender for Identity uh, will detect quite a few. And probably um, what you'll see in, uh, in the cloud service that you won't have seen if you're familiar with advanced threat analytics is things being applied here in preview uh, more quickly than, than what you would have seen um, with ATA. And if I just do a search, and one of those more recently was the suspected Windows principle of service exploitation attempt. So Microsoft were able to fairly quickly once they knew there was a, an exploitation attempt available for the Windows principle of service, they were able to put this into the uh, Microsoft Defender for Identity Cloud service so that you got the benefit of knowing if that attack was happening in your, in your environment uh, far more quickly than if you're running the, the on-premises version, which is part of the reason why Microsoft is pushing us towards Microsoft Defender for Identity and um, end of lifing the, uh, the ATA uh, solution. One of the other useful things that I wanted to show you here was some scheduled reports so that if people in your organization uh, on a regular basis want to review uh, information about the types of alerts and health issues that are taking place uh, without necessarily getting the operational or dealing operationally with those, those alerts. Uh, so modifications to sensitive groups, passwords exposed in clear text, and uh, lateral movements to paths to sensitive accounts. So some information there. Uh, one of the interesting things, um, if you're wondering about sensitive groups, and one of the things I do like um, about the Microsoft Defender for, a, uh, for identity uh, solution is that we can, we can go ahead and define what our sensitive groups are. So things like um, domain admins, enterprise admins are automatically tagged as, as sensitive groups. And if, if I go here and start typing in, Domain admins, we'll see domain controllers, domain admins, and we've got the S there, uh, denoting this, this is a sensitive sensitive group. If I've got a group, uh, sorry, that's in the wrong spot. If I've got a group that I want to mark as being sensitive, I can just go ahead and add that in. If the SQL admins group, I wanted to notify, uh, be notified of when we're included in that report, about sensitive group modifications for auditing purposes or whatever other purpose, I can go ahead and just add that group in my, my custom groups um, so that they'll be included in that information. One of the other things I want to point out because Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, as you know from, I hope you know from part one, if you watched part one of this series, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is my favorite. So there is integration between Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Defender for Identity, which is fantastic uh, and, and good to see. And more importantly, gives you a benefit of the endpoint signal as signals being correlated with Microsoft Defender for Identity. So if an attack is happening on an endpoint uh, that can be correlated with an attack that may be happening uh, against your directory service. One of the other things uh, that's interesting here 
and very helpful when you're investigating uh, any sort of any sort of attack, and I'll type administrator in the right spot, uh, is at the timeline. So certain actions that take place, uh, and you can see here, uh, I've got a user and IP address reconnaissance uh, over SMB that we saw in our main timeline uh, in, in the main uh, dashboard screen. So we're able to view actions against uh, objects, uh, changes that have been made, um, and in this case, against the administrator account. So the administrator account, we've got a history removed, um, some accounts from the domain admins group, um, was queried by one or more users from a, a server called HV01P using SAMR. Um, this account also enumerated all users with an open SMB session on the domain controllers from that server. Uh, using SMB, uh, we can see some user IP address reconnaissance that looks suspicious. Uh, credentials were validated and also logged on to this other server. So we get quite detailed information that helps us to investigate um, an action or a or an attempt. And it's 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 quite good. There are there are some I may have mentioned before that there are some policies that uh, are recommended to be set up to improve the detection method, and that's contained within the the Defender for Identity documentation. So enough with the old, in with the new. So this is the Cloud App Security Portal, where if you remember from the architecture, that the information from Microsoft Defender for Identity feeds into. So the Cloud App Security Portal is not just for Defender for Identity. It does a bunch of other stuff. Uh, information from Microsoft Defender for Endpoint uh, feeds into this as well. You can also connect Office 365 uh, discovery information and feed this into uh, the Cloud App Security Portal. So this is the, the preferred method that the Microsoft are now providing for, uh, for, using, uh, for investigating uh, those threats. And if I go to alerts, it's a bunch of other different alerts in my test environment, but the one that we saw in Defender for Identity was the user and IP address uh, reconnaissance. So we get a slightly uh, different view of that. Uh, but we can still see similar information um, about what, what happened. Um, the administrator uh, was exposed on that domain controller. Um, and this alert falls under the following MITRE tactic was discovery. So this is kind of that initial discovery. Um, is this someone trying to learn more about the environment before they move on uh, to, to try uh, and either move laterally or gain um, you know, additional credentials or to exfiltrate data or whatever they're, they're attempting to do. One of the other benefits of having the Microsoft Defender for Identity information fed into the, the Cloud App Security Portal is we're able to correlate uh, some of those events from, from synced accounts on premises uh, that, that are synced with or may be synced with Azure Active Directory accounts. Uh, and we can see the behavior around other applications that might give us a, a better picture uh, of what that person is trying to do, not just to on-premises applications, but also to cloud applications. Now, my environment's a little bit limited here. I'm not using Azure AD Connect to, to synchronize those identities. Uh, but one of the things I did want to show you uh, in the activity log first is that we do now have Active Directory information uh, listed here alongside our Microsoft Online services. So we can get Active Directory events uh, and information into the Cloud App Security Portal, as I mentioned, to help us with, with that investigation. The other bit I wanted to show that Microsoft Defender for Identity provides is this, uh, this identity security posture status, uh, which helps me determine in, in my case that I have Prince Poolers on my domain controllers where I should really go ahead and disable that Prince Pooler service. I, don't, I shouldn't be printing. I shouldn't need the Prince Pooler service, and we saw before that there was a in preview, not in in preview, sorry, that there was a um, a detection for uh, principal exploits uh, with within your environment available through Microsoft Defender for Identity. So it also gives me uh, some interesting uh, information that it will continue to evaluate. So it's not just a once off. It's telling me yes that the resolution is completed here. But if someone did enable an application within my environment. Um, that was exposing credentials in clear text, then we would see that in the Cloud App Security Portal. Uh, we'd get notified of that. So that's that's very important. So from a continual or a continuous access, uh, continuous evaluation, I should say, 
uh, that uh, the Defender for Identity sensors will feed information uh, into the Cloud App Security Portal and help you stay on, on top of and know what, what the things are that you should be deploying. So things there like, like laps. So let's have a look um, at my domain controllers with principal uh, service available. And it goes ahead, um, identifies domain controllers and tells me the recommended action, which is in this case, disable the principal service. And if we were to look at something like laps, local administration password service, um, it will tell me that there are 105 devices that are not using laps uh, that I should go ahead and enable laps uh, in my domain for. And finally, I just wanted to jump back to the dashboard and show you a bit that we, we didn't touch on when we first looked at the Cloud App Security Portal, but Defender for Identity also gives us, uh, with the identity protection component uh, that we saw in that initial definition, the ability to, or a prioritization score for investigating users within our environment. So we can also do that through users and accounts uh, here as well. We can identify, pick an account uh, and do an investigation uh, on that account. Uh, so if we go to the user page, similar to, to that, that overview screen, but more detail as to what we should or why we should investigate this particular user. In our case, this user has no, um, investigation priority score, no actions. Uh, Adele has no actions, no malicious actions uh, against her account, but we can look at related activity and related alerts uh, for that user as well. So let me let me go back and maybe pick someone who is in fact in a priority investigation. So let's pick Alex, and this will open that same user page and, and give us some history as to what happened. So there was a risky IP address sign in a Tor IP address sign in um, a couple of times, and we can see there's, there's a bunch more of alerts there that, that took place. Uh, so that's given Alex quite a high investigation priority. There are 14 open alerts we may want to investigate, and I can have a look at the related activity uh, within the applications that are feeding this information into the Cloud App Security Portal. And we can see um, highlighted there what those um, around that time frame. Uh, what those actions were. So that if we were concerned about someone gaining access to information that they may or may not or should not have access to, or the location that they're accessing from uh, and successfully accessing, it might point to, to data exfiltration, um, or at least we know the extent as well of, of the information that, that someone has been able to access. And so you can see all of this highlighted area um, that Alex usually logs in from the United States. And we've seen all of these other logins from either those Tor addresses or addresses we hadn't seen before from Latvia, the Netherlands. Um, and this, this may mean that we need to immediately change um, Alex's password, or it may be part of uh, an attack, depending on the other alerts that we're seeing in Microsoft Defender for Identity. But again, getting a much better picture of, of what's happening not just against our on-premises uh, identities, but the identity that is synced to the, uh, the applications that are also using those, those identities. Um, in this case, Azure Active Directory synced to our on-premises, uh, synced from our on-premises Active Directory, I should say. So that's a brief run through of Microsoft Defender for Identity. I hope that you found that useful and I hope you can see the value of using that in your Active Directory environments. Again, uh, just to recap, the importance of, of having visibility um, of what's happening against your Active Directory environment, linking that to your synchronized uh, services and applications that use those services. So if someone does um, make it onto uh, your VPN uh, through an exploit uh, in IIS or another web application, or they, they, there is a, um, an unexpected you know, open port through your firewall that gives people access to something that they shouldn't have access to. Having that visibility to know when these types of actions are happening on your Active Directory environment are, are critical. Uh, if people are doing uh, malicious things, um, whether they're internal people or external people are doing malicious things within your environment to try and gain access to information, um, to accounts, to then run um, malware in your environment or ransomware or whatever purpose, it's important to know that these actions are, are taking place as quickly as possible so that you can investigate and respond accordingly. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching and look forward to part three